I have been uh, asked to try and give some kind of a, a, a my vision of, of things, and so I tried to put some, uh, some thoughts together. And I think the, the first thing that I'm reminded of is that uh, St. Paul said that all of us were baptized into the death and the resurrection of Christ. And, and because of that, we became adopted daughters and sons of the Father, and we became brothers and sisters with each other. We also, through our baptism, became members of the visible Roman Catholic Church and hopefully part of the mystical body of Christ. In our, um, as members of the church, probably our, our deepest experience of church is our parish. Uh, that's where many of us learned our faith. Certainly that's where we participated in the sacraments, uh, where we were confirmed, where we received reconciliation. It's the place where we uh, attend weddings and funerals of our loved ones. Uh, it's where we find fellow Christians with whom we, we journey through life. And most importantly, it's where we gather weekly to celebrate the death and the resurrection of Christ in Eucharist. And so I'd like to um, first reflect a little bit on Eucharist. Uh, this is the source and the summit of our spiritual life. Wheat and grapes are transformed by human hands into bread and wine. And then we offer that bread and wine back to God as a symbol of all that we are and all that we do. We join it to Christ's own self-sacrifice as we offer it to the Father. And then it is transformed into Christ himself and given back to us so that we might be transformed. And transformed, we're sent out into the world to transform our world. So there's a, for me in Eucharist, there's a powerful dynamic of, of gift and reception of that gift, return of that gift, that lies at the very heart of Eucharist. And, and that's one of the reasons why a communion service or a Sunday celebration in the absence of a priest, prayerful as it is, is not Eucharist. Because that, that essential divine exchange of gifts is missing. Then, because we do Eucharist, we are Eucharist. And so I would expect that a community which has Eucharist at the heart of things would celebrate liturgy well. With everyone taking part fully, consciously, and actively, as we say. I would also expect that from that participation in Eucharist would flow works of charity and of justice, where family life would be marked by truly being a domestic church, and where we would use our gifts and talents as God would have us use them. I would expect that church to be characterized by a spirit of stewardship of all gifts and gratitude that would come from a desire to share this life, to evangelize others, to encourage religious vocations. So my vision of Eucharist is not just something we do, but probably is the most important thing we do as the summit and the font of everything else that's part of our Christian life. And that brings me to today. Um, in, in six years, uh, I need to submit my resignation to the Holy Father uh, because I'll turn 75. <clears throat> and I, I certainly could save myself a, a great deal of anxiety if I could just bury my head in the sand right now and not try to do any planning. I think that could be very easy to do. And, and I think for six years, I probably could put Band-Aids on things and get us through, through six years. Um, and then let the next 
let the next bishop deal with it. But I don't think that would be responsible leadership, and I don't think it would be a good thing for the diocese. And that's why I have invited you uh, to be responsible leaders along with me uh, to chart out for ourselves what, what the church might look like in the next 10 years. The projection of active priests is that we would go from 59 currently to 41 in 2020. So a potential of 18 fewer priests. But this is not just about priests, it's about parishioners, it's about demographics, and it's about sociology. Uh, in 1967, we had 3,800 baptisms in the diocese. Uh, in 2008, we had less than half that number. In 1967, there were 1,000 marriages, and we're just over that number, over half that number in 2008. And we know that couples nowadays do not have large families. We are a rural diocese, and farming has changed significantly. Where before we might have had five or six family farms, uh, now there's one corporate farm. And we need to be very conscious of serving the farm families. We have 12 parishes that have less than 100 households each, and yet many of them are very vibrant Eucharistic communities. The Hispanic community in the, in the last decade, since 2000, has increased in some counties by 100%, a couple by 200%, and one by over 300%. And we need to minister to those Hispanic communities. Certainly in my vision, I don't want to close any churches. Why would I want to close a church? But at the same time, Eucharist is not a building as noble or as sacred or as treasures that it might be. My vision is that people would have access to vibrant parishes with weekly Eucharist. I truly believe there are some very, very wonderful, positive things already happening. And in my vision, I think there could be potential for other, even greater things to happen. What would happen if three or four parishes got together and hired a full-time youth minister, where one of them by themselves could not do it, and where they might have 10 kids, what would happen if we had a full-time youth minister for four parishes with 50 kids? Uh, what about a full-time DRE, a business manager, where one couldn't, perhaps several could? What about a qualified lay pastoral associate who could take over some administrative uh, things so that the priest would be freed for more sacramental work? We have four parish life administrators in the diocese who are doing a wonderful job. And I, and I know that it sounds like an easy solution for people to say, well, we'll just hire a deacon or a lay person to administer the parish. Uh, but you have to remember that there has to be a priest supervisor appointed who bears the ultimate responsibility for the parish and we do need to assign a priest for the sacraments. So if in your discussions you think, well, we should hire a PLA, you also have to address the issues of who would be the priest supervisor and where are we going to find the sacramental minister. And I, and I don't think we can presume upon the generosity of the retired priest, especially as you get into some of the uh, outlying rural areas. One option could be a qualified pastoral associate who took, was given that in their job description to take care of this parish under the pastor uh, of two or three places. Uh, that's part of your discussion. 
I think we, 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 we could throw up our hands and we could give up. We can be negative. We can blame all kinds of people and events. We can abandon the church. We can want to change things that uh, we can't change. Or we can be positive and hopeful and at the same time realistic. We can work together and we can build active and alive parishes. We can encourage and promote vocations. And my hope is that when all is said and done over these next months, we will have a strategic plan to help guide us through the next few years. Uh, realize that that plan needs to be a little bit flexible uh, and, and fluid. So just because we decide that this is what we would like to have, things do change. Uh, sometimes I find that I, I'm able now to supply a priest where I didn't think I'd be able to. Uh, Father Ron Hodges is a, a Benedictine priest who would like to become part of the diocese, the diocesan priest, and he's in the process over the next months for us to look at him and him to look at us. I will eventually have, hopefully, a priest that I can put someplace that I didn't have before. Sometimes I have to transfer a priest. And sometimes that causes a domino effect. You take this one out and I gotta put somebody there and then I have to put somebody there. And then sometimes God takes somebody home before we're ready for them to go home. Uh, but hopefully to plan uh, gives us some orderly and thoughtful process. Gives us a chance to really try and discern what's God's will for us and not ours. So our, our goal ultimately is to develop plan and plans that are based on these current demographics and projections so that we can continue to have a Catholic presence and life-giving parishes throughout the diocese. I think there's, there's so much more that could be said that needs to be said. Uh, our theology of church, the Paschal mystery, uh, there are many other issues that have come into play and, and hopefully will be part of your discussion. Uh, Catholic schools, stewardship, vocations, the re-evangelization of our own people, family life, certainly the, the areas of ministry. Uh, and the, the issues are complex. And, and there are not simple answers or single answers to any one of those questions. But I have to believe that those of us who are here have chosen the path to be positive and realistic. And it's my prayer that God, who is beginning the good work, will finally bring it to fulfillment. All yours. Thank you.